Uh, white people should find it easier to adopt children from ethnic minorities in England under new guidelines being issued to social workers. Local authorities are to be told not to delay placing a child, even if the prospective family is of a different ethnic group. Well, Francesca Pellini has adopted two Mexican children from outside of the UK after being told she couldn't adopt from within, and she joins me in the studio. Good afternoon to you. So, you were told you couldn't adopt in this country? That's right. Why? Because we were white. And you wanted to adopt non-white children? Well, we wanted to adopt. It was that simple, really. We wanted to adopt, and we knew that obviously there's thousands of children in the UK at any one point in time who are looking for a permanent, stable home. So we rang, we rang our council to, to apply for adoption, and we, were, we actually we were denied the possibility to even apply to adopt because we were white. And the, it, that, is that because there were only mixed-race children available? Well, we were told that all the children available for adoption in that council at that specific point in time were all black or mixed race mm -hmm. and given that we were white and there was a cap on number of white couples that could adopt black on, or mixed race children we, we, we couldn't adopt. How did you feel when you were told that? Well it was, it was, it was devastating really not, not so much for us which of course was very sad but much more for the children that we knew of which like I said there is thousands who are in care and we're looking for a stable home that we were able to offer them. And when you were looking for a child, did it cross your mind that you wanted a child of a particular race, a white child or a black no. child, or was it just a child? No, just a child, absolutely. So where did you go from there? Well, it's the paradox, I guess, is, is that within that same telephone conversation, because it wasn't even a face-to-face, -face, we were told that, however, we could consider international adoption, knowing full on well that obviously the children were likely to be from a different ethnicity anyway. And we were therefore then approved to um, adopt from Mexico, where we then adopted two children of a different ethnicity anyway. Okay, so how has that worked out? It's worked out really well. It, the pro the the process itself was grueling and harrowing, and, um, but the children are wonderful and obviously the process, you know, we're, we're really happy now. What do you think of those who say that, that difficulties arise when you get a, a mixed race family, so the parents are of one colour and the children of another, that difficulties will arise later perhaps, and identity well, difficulties particularly? Sure, I mean there's, there's a chance that that will be the case, however in terms of wh when you look at adoption, the, the situation at the moment is that the majority of children looking for a permanent family are non-white and the majority of prospective adoptive parents are white and so in an ideal world you would want to tick all the right boxes and, and make the perfect match but we don't live in an ideal world we live in one where this match is not possible and therefore the solution surely can't be sending prospective parents abroad and leaving the children in foster care until they're well, well especially if you're being sent abroad to adopt a non-white child exactly Exactly. Are you pleased then to hear of these guidelines? Absolutely, I'm thrilled. I'm absolutely thrilled. I've, I've been campaigning for, for, for these changes for nearly three years now, so I'm absolutely thrilled. Now, you, you've written a book about the, your I experiences, have. haven't yes, you? Yes, Mexican Takeaway. And Bruce Oldfield, Mexican Takeaway. <laughs> and Bruce Oldfield uh, has supported you. Yes, he has. He's written a foreword, and obviously he, he was raised by a single white woman, and ha as he w himself would admit, this would never happen in this day and age. Yeah. Um, however, if it wasn't for that single white woman he wouldn't be the person that he's now. Have you met other families in the same situation? Oh absolutely hundreds of them. I, I, I run a campaigning organization called Adoption with Humanity which is campaigning exactly to change this and other aspects of the um, adoption system mm. and I meet hundreds of couples and single parents mm. who find themselves and have found themselves in exactly the same position. I, I'm assuming that the, the council uh, case workers on this were, were just adhering by the letter of, of their rules at the time. Did, were you shown compassion? Did any of them ever say, we know this is ridiculous, but this is the No, rules? no. Not at all? No, not at all. No, neither on the first or the second adoption. And nobody really admitted the paradox or ludicrous. And you said, just briefly, you said that you, this, the, the process you had to go through to get your children from Mexico was quite harrowing. Was it more harrowing than being rejected here? Um, well, it was pr more or less the same, I guess, <laughs> but for, ver for very different reasons. The length of the process, the cost of the process, the inefficiency of the process were, were just harrowing. Do you feel sad that you couldn't have given a child in this country? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yet, I'm obviously overjoyed with my children, uh, but hopefully in the future, given the new guidelines, maybe it will be ha it'll okay. happen in the Francesca, future. Francesca, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.